Hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Wednesday weekly uh, live. I go live on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern to talk to all of my people, all of my artists. We discuss all the things that independent artists need to step up their artistry and become the artist of your life. So as you're tuning in today, say hello, um, post what state or city or country you're tuning in from. And today the topic is how to find your sound and direction on your next project. Uh, before I get started, a very quick announcement. Um, tomorrow I am speaking on this subject I'm giving a two-hour mastermind. It's um, basically about an hour plus of the topic, and then we have a discussion and there's Q&A. And I do this on my Artist Sanctuary membership. And there's a special promo going on right now. It's only $49 to join. So, And that gives you three events a month. Um, and one of them is tomorrow on this specific subject. Um, so I wanted to just let you guys know that right away. And if you want to go, um, to the, I'm going to post it on YouTube, um, the information so that you can join us, uh, and you can, it's a monthly membership. You can opt out at any time, come and try it, uh, join our mastermind tomorrow. It's, uh, with full, a full slide deck. Um, and you would use the, um, I'm just putting it in the chat in YouTube and you would use the coupon and I'm going to add that. It's also on Instagram in our link tree and the coupon is ASM special. So I'm just putting that in the, on YouTube where you can see that. Um, so let's dive in. So as always, these tips are from the weekly blog, which is released every Wednesday. Uh, in the morning, and you can join carrycole.com and get that right in your inbox. It's a fresh blog every single uh, week. And then I discuss that topic on our Instagram, YouTube, Facebook live. So finding and building a sound and direction is the process of A&R. It is, uh, which stands for artist and repertoire. And it used to be the department at a label, it still is, that develops the artist's sound and direction. Today, it's a little bit more known as, a and is a little bit more known as a talent scout, but truthfully, it really is the process of developing uh, the content, the matching of the artist and the repertoire together to create a greater impact in that artist's record, right? So the record label wants to secure that record they want to um they want to secure their investment they want to get a return on their investment so they want to uh, do everything that they can to improve help that artist write a better record and record a better record and then brand the record right so the process of a and r and i've taken that process of a and r and uh, i've been doing a and r over the past decade now uh, with artists in our community and at my label. So I have a, a boutique small label that I started about three years ago, four, oh, four years ago, COVID is just, no, it's actually five years ago. It was 2019. Those COVID years are just like subtracted in my brain. So anyway, you can find out more about my label at ccdm.co. Um, but what I want you to know is that the process of a and is extremely important uh, and it's kind of disappeared from uh, now that independent artists are releasing their own music out there, the process of the making of the record, the writing and the making of the record is left to the artist on their own. And that's not terrible because artists are creatives, right? You're always writing, you're all, you always have all of these ideas, but the process of curating that material and, and really curating the material that is going to make an impact out there for you, those, that's, that's a more detailed process. So I'm going to talk about that today um, and then give you some uh, tips. At the end of each live now, I'm adding a new thing. I'm going to give you questions to think about at the end of the live. So 
uh, stick around for the end of the live, or you can go uh, if you have, if you can't be here for the whole live today, which is about half an hour, 35 minutes, um, then you can go and watch the replay on YouTube and you can get uh, the questions on YouTube at the end to be thinking about it. Because I want to give you questions each week to really ponder on the subject. Um, so making a masterpiece means first fleshing out the right sound and direction. And those of you that are on Instagram, I'm just letting you know that the signal is much more solid on YouTube if you want to switch over there. Instagram has given us quite some problems. I don't know what the, what the issue is. But if you want a more solid stream, go over to YouTube. So making a masterpiece means really fleshing out the right sound and direction for starters. The sound and direction is extremely important. And many artists... Um, have a hard time maybe committing to a genre or uh, doing the work to really find the sound from the beginning of the record. I feel like a lot of people experiment during the making of the record. And this is where pre-production or the work that you do even before you hit pre-production can really improve the quality of that record, right? We really want to dive into the creative process here. So most artists, uh, and one of the one of the issues uh, that many artists will tell me is like, well, gosh, I listen to so much music. I listen to multiple genres. You know, this part can be kind of hard to figure out. And this is true. And the good news is, as an artist, you want to have a rich listening palette. You want to have a wide palette of music that you listen to because you're drawing from a lot of different genres and and different uh ideologies you know i listen to a lot of jazz i listen to r&b that's not really in my sound but it influences it influences the voicings that i use um to some degree i also listen to a lot of classical i played classical guitar early on so and then i listen to a lot of pop and folk you know growing up and rock and so all of those influence my sound but they're not uh, necessarily discernible within the sound. And so we go through this process of A&R uh, that I've curated here at my company where you fill out an A&R profile that goes very, very deep into your listening history and into your, I know there's a lot on Instagram over here, guys, and I'm telling you the signal's not so good today. So if you want to head on over to YouTube, you're going to get a better signal. Um, but the thing that uh, when you fill out this form, it starts to identify uh, periods of time that you had when you were obsessed with certain particular genres or types of music. Uh, and then it gives you an opportunity to really dig deep into uh, all the genres uh, in order to circle back around to really commit to and develop the sound and direction. And sometimes it's a blending of genres, right? So sometimes. You know, we have, you know, maybe it's um, it's a rock sound, but it has, you know, a little bit of Americana or Southern in it, or it has more blues in it, or it has a little bit more towards the industrial or metal, or, you know, there are subgenres and then the description of that genre. So one of the things that I always talk about, and then and then besides the sound and direction, the sound element is the subject matter. This is also a very important piece of A and R, and the A and R is the process of cultivating the right material, subject matter, sound and direction for an artist to put out their best work and stand out in the marketplace. And so we want to also evaluate. So sound and direction is one subject I'm talking about today within, within finding the sound and direction a and r and the message and identity within the lyrical content and the subject is also equally an important part of a and r um, And when an artist aligns their music and their sound with their message and their identity, that's where magic really happens. And we've seen it time and time again, and it really is the hero's journey, the epic stories of overcoming from rags to riches, from lost to found, um, empowerment, whatever that topic is, and really great examples of artist identity and message matching in the music. Uh, for example, Tina Turner is one, What's Love Got to Do With It? And that was her epic comeback after escaping domestic abuse. 
And this song and album became a huge an anthem of hope for women everywhere. Cindy Lauper, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, the song that was a beacon for expressing her quirky personality and her unique identity, right? And that song was a fit for her. And she didn't, until she had that song, she wasn't breaking through. Tina Turner, that was her comeback, but it really talked about her, it, her story of her life, like what was happening, right? Marvin Gaye, What's Going On, it was his departure from R&B ballads to meaning and rebellion against the Vietnam War. Uh, Amy Winehouse, Back to Black, was a uh, very frank and stark breakup song that really revealed the singer's vulnerability, heartbreak, and depression. Um, and Amy's voice resonated with millions of around the world because these artists took the deep dive and they took the dive into their sound and direction and took the dive into their artist identity and their mesh, uh, message, I was going to say meshin, mission and message at the same time. So I'm just going to roll through three of the main secrets because we were talking about sound and direction just a moment ago and I want to follow through the thread on that. And um, these are three of five that are on the blog. If you want to go and read it sort of in order, head on over to the blog at carriecole.com forward slash blog. So pick a genre and stick to it. So as you head off on your next project, focus on the vision, you the, the direction that you want. What and, and just join in the comments. What direction are you headed into for your next album? Right. So how would you describe the genre, the subgenre, the description, where are you headed? You know, is it a classical pop crossover? Uh, aim, you know, um, I'm thinking of Evanescence meets Sarah Brightman, or is it like, where are you headed for your next project? Put some comments in the chat. Um, what are you listening to right now? Even just what are you listening to right now? You know, are you, uh, what kind of music are you listening to right now? Um, uh, for instance, you know, I may, I may love Stevie Wonder and I wore out the songs in the key of life, but that's not the sound and direction that I go for as an artist. However, his musicality influences me quite a bit. But if I jot down what I'm actually listening to, I'm probably going to have a little wider palette than I might put on the record, right? But that might influence me. There might be elements that are influencing me that I want to bring into that record. And it could be the voicings and the chords. It could be some of the subject matter, you know, the trick is to listen to a lot of music, but then narrow your sound down to the sound that's closest to your instincts, as well as what excites your artist self. And each project should tie into a, a bigger sound overall that those projects fit within, right? And every now and then you'll see an artist do pick a genre that's a departure, like Beyonce just went into country music. R&B is not that far from country music, though, in a lot of ways. You know, it's based in rhythm and blues and R&B. So it's very kind of interesting. That choice was was sort of shocking. Now, Beyonce can do whatever she wants to do because she has so much, she has such a huge following and so many albums out. So you'll see artists after 10 albums, 12 albums. Elvis Costello did the same thing. He did a country record. Um, you'll see artists do that. John Mayer did the same thing, did more of a country record after 10 albums of pop, but after 10 albums of pop. So for the independent artist, it's really important not to jump around, but more to refine the sound and direction. And later on, you could do a genre jump. Okay. But most of the time it's a blending of genres, right? So write down your biggest influences throughout your life. Then select three to four artists that resonate the most with you, right? So who are the artists that are the most similar to your sound that you would want to blend? Or what are the genres you want to blend? Put some notes in the comments so I can see what everybody's thinking here, right? So what, what genres are you or what sounds are you trying to blend? Right. Because artists are high level creatives. So you're always you're not wanting to stick in a in a in a genre. You've got, OK, maybe I'm maybe I'm Americana, but I have more blues in me or maybe I have more rock in me. 
right? You look at Chris Stapleton, you know, he's Americana, but he's more blues and even a little bit of rock elements. Or Lenny Kravitz has more rock. He's a, he's a rocker, right? But he has more funk kind of elements. Or you look at Prince, right? He was pop, but he wasn't really R&B, but he wasn't really funk, but he brought those elements in. So what are you playing with right now? What are the genres? Just give me a shout out in the comments. Um, is it pop folk? Is it pop blues? Uh, Amy says, I love the beautiful voices of Celine Dion, Mariah, and Whitney. Okay, so a vocal-centric album. So then, Amy, you really want to work on your vocal, you know, to inspire you to move towards those influences. Daniel Binderman, yes, country, funk, Americana, blues. Yes, as we define that, and I would probably say country, Americana, blues, and then funk at the end, unless you want that funk to be more prevalent than Americana's, right? So as we as we start to lay out the genres and the subgenres, put them in order of the prevalence in the sound, you know, how much that aspect is informing the sound, right? Then you want to create a playlist. Then you want to create a playlist of songs that reflect your sound and direction. Yes. So if you want a more solid stream, head on over to YouTube because Instagram has just been giving us trouble. YouTube, the stream is super solid over here. I got a bunch of my peeps over here. Um, so put put the genre, the genre and the subgenres in order of what the most prevalence of that sound in your sound, right? So put them in order. Then create a playlist of songs that you'd like your next project to sound like. So include different tempos, up-tempo, mid-tempo, and ballads for variety, right? So Lerato says R&B, Afro, pop. Yes. So is it more Afro than it is pop, or is it more pop than it is Afro, right? So Afro might be an influence in it. But pop is the bigger main genre, like R&B be the main genre, pop the second genre, and then Afro or the other way around, right? So just start to put the, the genre and the subgenres in order of the sound so that you can start to organize because, you know, and there might be a little jazz element in there, or there might be a little folk element in there, or there might be, you know, and we can, we can put them they're in order and then decide in the production, we decide in the production how we want to bring those elements in, how we want to tie them in, right? Strictly South African says, I'm a hip hop pop cat. I love Eminem, Tupac, and Jake Cole. These artists speak to me. Yes. So then the next piece is really the wild card. So how are you going to stand out, right? So in the process that we do, we look for, once we've really gotten the genre and the subgenres really dialed out, right? And then the references for those, you know, not to say it, but what do you mean? What does that sound like? Really identify a couple of reference tracks that are pretty point spot on that sound, right? And for that genre, you know, that kind of R&B or that kind of pop. There's a lot of different kinds of R&B. There's a lot of different kinds of hip hop. There's a lot of different kinds of Americana. What in particular, what, what sound in particular of that Americana and those reference tracks will really help you. And then uh, as you do that with your genre and your subgenres, and then you look for that little streak that's a little different, right? So for instance, for Lorado would be maybe the Afro would be what defines the difference or Dan Benderman might be the funk element, right? Or it might be the Americana element, whatever it is, or the blues element. What is the element that you want to have as the differentiator, I call it, or the wild card, right? And the wild card, here's a good example of a wild card. So, um, name is totally just just ran right out of my brain um you know the americana group that put the banjo in with right and we hadn't heard that in the longest 
time. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Rescue me. Come on, come on. It was a big, uh, I'm going to post it on YouTube later. Um, but it was a band that, you know, had kind of an Americana, kind of Americana Rocky sound. And they had a banjo right within Mumford & Sons. Thank you. Um, and that was a sound that we hadn't heard. So that's an example of a wild card being a sound element. But a wild card can also be a subject matter, right? So it can be, um, you know, the, the kind of um, lyric that you're, the subject matter, like Lizzo's a good example. She's talking about body positivity and empowerment, right? So her wild card is more that. Her wild card is not actually in the sound, right? So a wild card can be in a sound or it can be, you know, the message of that artist, but cultivated and curated in a way that is really obvious and stands out and is a big part of the brand. Um, so that's that's a little bit about sound and direction. Of course, we go much, much deeper in the process of that. And I'm going to go much deeper into it tomorrow for my Artist Sanctuary membership, where I'm giving a full talk on ANR with 100 page slides. So those of you that are really interested in this process, I put the links um, on YouTube for the Artist Sanctuary membership. It's only $49 to join us tomorrow. And you'll get the full recording and the full slides and the full layout of this A&R process and how it really works. So go and check that out. Make sure you use the coupon ASM special. So the next little piece to talk about is in the sound and direction is to really be rooted in the past, but relevant today. So you want to borrow from yesterday, but you want to use modern musical elements or sounds from today. For a good example of that would be Amy Winehouse's Back to Black. So legendary producer Mark Ronson pulled from the, and Amy pulled from the past but set the record in the current day with modern sounds, right? So they made the sounds modern, but the uh, Amy's voice certainly uh, was a signature of hers, right? Her voice really stands out. It has jazz elements, but it has kind of a raw and rougher element, yeah? And then her lyric has a very raw, vulnerable, kind of rough and raw, rough and tumble element in her subject, the way that she talks, right? And the kind of slang in the way that she spoke um, and wrote as, as a writer brought that sort of raw element, right? And But it was really kind of coming from Motown or coming from that jazz, and then her voice was sort of jazz. So blended a lot of different things and grabbed the past, was rooted in the past. It had that vintage feeling but the sounds and the way that the um, uh, patterns moved, the way the instruments moved, had a more modern approach. So that was being rooted in the past, but relevant today. And I think that you want to be up to date with current trends, but you don't need to be followed. You don't want to be following the trends. You want to be setting the trends. Yes, because when you follow the trends, we're regurgitating what has already been done. And that may be, you may want to, you may have a, a tendency to want to do that because you want to be popular, right? It's kind of like high school. You want to wear all the clothes that the cool girls or guys are wearing or whatever it is to be popular. But you have to, as an artist, you have to always be observant of your own work. You have to pull back and be observant and aware and have an objective uh, viewpoint after you've created something, give it a couple days, put it away, and then bring it back up and listen to it or look at it. How is it hitting you? And are you communicating what it is that you really want? Because in your production, you're saying something, you're making a statement in musical history. So not to give you writer's block or production block <laughs> or creative block, but more like feel overwhelmed by it, but more dive into the process of it more. Like, how can I, how can I, what can I bring? So is there a wild card element that sets me apart from other people, maybe in my subject matter, like with Marvin Gaye? 
it was his subject matter. You know, he was really upset about the Vietnam War. Before that, he was singing, you know, he was wearing a skinny tie and he's wearing suits and he was singing about ballads and love, right? And so when he went to his label, he'd written this record and had this huge artistic epiphany and he went to the label and they said, you're crazy, you're gonna lose your audience. And I, I don't know what the actual story is. I, I, know he le I know he left and he put out his own record or not then, he went to another label because you couldn't do that then. But whatever the story was, the record came out and was a huge hit um, because it was so uh, extremely well written, which it has to be. Your work has to be extremely well written and better than what is out there. And again, not to give you writer's block, to give you encouragement to dive deeper into the craft. Because with 100,000 songs being released on Spotify every day, uncurated now, so because artists are just putting up their own stuff, which is fantastic that you can do that. But on the other hand, creates a whole nother problem because the music isn't curated enough um, and gotten to the place where it's really speaking. Uh, it's really going to do something for you. So back to Marvin Gaye. I know I've got a lot of threads going on here. Um, but back to Marvin Gaye, you know, that was a risk for him uh, to really depart so much from what he had been doing. But what happened was he discovered himself and probably got signed before he really knew who he was then discovered himself and was willing to take that risk. And usually when an artist takes a big risk, and what I mean is they might make a, you know, do a record that's a departure from the sound that they had. Um, that That's a big risk. If you're, if you already have an audience, you're going to lose them. Period. But, but, if you don't have that big of an audience and most independent artists aren't at that place, you have the opportunity to really think this through and to really dive deep on it. Uh, and the, also he took the risk in the subject matter, which was the thread I was trying to bring through is the subject matter, right? So he was willing to tell the truth about how he felt at a time that was not that popular to talk about that, right? It's kind of like Billie Holiday and Strange Fruit. Like it was not popular to talk about black people being lynched in the South as a black artist in the 1960s, early 70s, right? That was not a popular subject. It was not a popular subject to talk about being against the Vietnam War. It was counterculture at the time, right? But it, resonated with so many people and he had the courage to bring that forward. So you want to think also about getting your music to match your message and who you really are. And you want to write about real stuff from your life. Real songs make more impact. And it's common to not want to dig into the uncomfortable stuff or, you know, really tell the truth or, you know, brave saying something that might not be popular because it really is the truth. But that's when the artist is tapping something vi vital. Um, and, you know, artists are the rebels and the uh, misfits and the revolutionaries and the visionaries and those that are ahead of the curve, at least they're supposed to be. <laughs> I think in the past couple of decades we've seen as the music industry machine got so well oiled and started spitting out copies of other artists you know like Adele became famous and then the, the labels look for a whole bunch more Adele's because they want to replicate that success um, and so they're they're to blame somewhat uh, but with artists in the marketplace now making these decisions putting out their own music there's a lot to consider when you're putting something out. I mean, the first thing is your music has to be better than what's out there or uh, on point with what's out there in order to be level the playing field, right? And to have a chance, but to actually make a dent in the playing field, you want to really uh, curate the sound and direction and the subject matter 
on your record because those are the things that make you stand out, right? Uh, when you write from real life, oh, I'm going over and over and over. A, a and I'm, I'm at time already and I want to answer some questions. Um, my best piece of advice to stand out with your writing is to study songwriting because you want to execute at a high level of skill. Here's my little synopsis, and then I'm going to get to the questions. Um, write two to three times what you need. So two to three times what you need. So if you're putting out a seven song EP, write 14 to 21 songs and then pick the cherries. And then you're going to have all of those songs that you can also release, you know, in between albums or whatever, but, and you want to write in a collection. Don't just put out singles, people. You can put out singles, but the singles should be part of a collection of material and it should be cohesive because you need that in order to permeate and for your brand to make an impact for your message and your sound and direction, right? Big artists still release albums for a reason, for a reason, because you need a collection of material to sink your teeth into for an artist. If you go and you only find singles on the artist Spotify, you, you can't really sink your teeth into that, right? Um, so write two to three times what you need to pick the cherries. And we always do voting at our company. Um, and write from real life and write those things that are hard to say. Find those things that you need to say and say it because that element's really important in order to connect with your audience, right? It's not just about having good music out there. It's about what you're saying and it needs to matter, right? Um, so the questions of the week that I want you to think about, these two questions. One is what is the sound and direction for your next project? So I want you to think about that. You can go over to YouTube and put notes in the comments. Um, I will respond. Uh, tell me, you know, kind of where you're headed in your sound and direction. Feel free to leave links to your music. It's the Carrie Cold Music CO. It's you'll find my, the link in Instagram or anywhere. Just Carrie Cold YouTube, you'll find it. Um, so one is what is the sound and direction for your next project? And tell me a little bit about where you're headed. And two, the second question is, what is your hero's journey? What is what is the thing that you're? I didn't get into that as much today, but it's a really important part of ANR. And what is the thing that you're trying to overcome? Because I want you to write from real stuff. Okay. So the second question of the week is, what is your hero's journey? What are the things that you're you've overcome or are trying to overcome to really start to dig into the subject matter? to get it to match the artist and repertoire, the A&R, to find that uh, message and match the message and the sound and direction, uh, and also to push that envelope on the message so that you can stand out, because that is the goal. Are there any questions before I head out? Oh, I just, I could talk about A&R all day. And come and join, if you're really serious about your career, and you're really wanting high level support, come and join our Artist Sanctuary membership community and create your rise in music with us and a group of amazing artists and musicians from all over the world for only $49 a month. Come and join us, join before tomorrow, come and join the a &R conversation at 12 p.m. noon tomorrow for two hours, full slide deck, Q and A at every call. And there's three events with in each month. Um, so really don't hesitate to come and join us. Uh, any questions before I head out? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and hit the notification bell for when I go live on each platform. Head on over to YouTube and add those answers to the questions during the week, okay? And uh, join our list at carrygold.com. You've got our weekly blog. Uh, and our events page has all the information on our upcoming events and programs. And um, you can also set up a private vocal or music review with me to get my eyes and ears on your voice and music. Have an amazingly, wildly creative week today, uh, this week. And I will see you next week. Thanks for joining me today.